Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the homeless and the poor in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's Bible study is going to be on Don't Look Back. Every time we start to look back, the devil seems to grab us. He wants us to look back at our old circumstances, look back at our old sin, and look back at our old depression and oppression. But if we begin to look forward, we are going to be successful in God. Because Jesus said, keep looking forward to Toward him, because see, even Lot's wife looked back. She was looking back at her old situation, her old circumstance, and what she was familiar with. But when you look back, you'll turn into a pillar of salt. Even Jesus said, Any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So get your Bible, get your paper and your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. As I always say, There you go. Mm -hmm. God bless. Alright, um, let's get ourselves established before uh, we even start getting in, into my major message, but there's two scriptures I'd like to bring out before we get this message. Because I don't want you to feel sorry. Another reason why I certain people feel sorry because we, I don't know the spiritual condition, but if I had known that brother was saying, the Bible tells us to be joy. Amen. 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 You know, I don't know. Amen. I can't send you nowhere that God is sent you. And he's already wherever God is shot. And that's the thing you need to understand. You know, don't play with your life. When God takes you forward, there's no need for you to look back. And that's my message tonight. If God is taking you forward, don't ever look back again. Despite you, keep going forward. So before we start, let's go to um, Ecclesiastes 5 first. Verse 1. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1. And uh, let's see what God says about His Word. Sorry, let's read that with Proverbs for you who are hungry. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1. It says, Keep thy foot. When thou go up to the house of God. What does that mean, keep thy foot? It means sit down during service. Don't be moving about. That's disrespectful to God. Keep thy foot when you enter the house of God. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to hear. That means there shouldn't be a whole lot of conversation going on. You know? Because you at church. You're in the presence of the Lord. Be more ready to hear. Then to give the sacrifice of fools. Come in the service drunk. <clears throat> You're only here to get some food to eat. You're not respecting God. You're still selfish. You may drop dead walking down the door because you disrespected God. Hmm. For they cons for they consider not that they do what? Evil. Hello. Evil. So keep thy foot. Sit down during service and listen during the service. Go to Joshua chapter 1. And then we're going to get into our message. Joshua chapter 1. And look at verse 8. It says, this book of the law, the book of the law is the Bible. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein, what? Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. Don't make no excuses about what's in it. But you are learning to do what's in it. That's why you should be meditating on it. Day and night. Amen. <laughs> For then thou shalt make thy way, what? Prosperous. And then shall, then thou shalt have what? Good success. Prosperity is not money, housing, and cars. Prosperity is you having the wisdom of God. Amen. And you got the wisdom of God, you got true prosperity. Because the devil will give you a good job just to keep. Did Leon finally get a job? Got sick and did what? Died. Hello. Amen. So the night service is going to be on. 
Don't look back. Let's go to Genesis chapter 19. I just want to open that up so that you will understand that God is looking at your attitude during service. He is looking to see whether you're here. He is looking to see whether you're disrespecting him in your attitude. Amen. So you just can't get saved and don't want to do nothing else. Amen. Calling on the name of Jesus as an insurance policy doesn't get you in heaven. Why well, I'm going to claim Jesus just so I don't won't go to hell. Sorry. Claiming Jesus that don't do nothing Jesus told you to do, you're still going to hell. Hello. Claiming Jesus is still having a hateful, nasty attitude, self-righteous, you're going to hell. You can say his name all day. But you don't have no wisdom of God, no love of God, no humility of God, no kindness. You're still going to hell. Amen? And if you come toward Jesus and look back to your old condition, guess what? You never will born again. Because how in the world can you come to Jesus and go back? Amen? Now, I understand a struggle going forward, but there ain't no way in the world you should be going back every day to your old condition, your old ways, and your old sin if you're in Jesus. Amen? But let's look at some people in the Bible. And you might be familiar with the story, or maybe not. In Genesis 19, and we're going to start at verse 15. Y'all bear with me. I haven't read this in a mighty long time. But I pulled this out of the archives and uh, decided to bring it in a time of such as this. All right, Genesis 19, start at verse 15. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here. Let's not be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Now. And while he lingered, talking about he was just hanging around. While he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, meaning the angels, hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and, amen, I like that, they brought him forth, and sent them without the city. Look at that. He lingered too long. How many of you were hanging around certain situations too long? Sometimes people have to come and drag you out by the hand. Because they know you ain't going to move. Amen. They know you want to stay right there. But look at God. God sent two angels to drag them out. Amen. Verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth from God that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not, look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be what? Consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape into the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Let's keep reading. Verse 20. Behold, now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto them, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the, for the which thou hast spoken. Hasty, escape there, for I cannot do anything till thou become there. I ain't going to do nothing until you get out of here. Because you're my child, right? I'm killing everything else, but you need to get out of here. Mm. Hello. There are some places in your destructive life that God will destroy until you get out of here. Ooh, somebody got that. Amen. Hasty escape there. I cannot do anything till thou become there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. I'm going to go back to what that name means. Verse 23, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife, hello, but his wife looked back from behind she became a pillar of salt. Now, I have had argued that his wife looked back from behind him. But well, first of all, 
what does the city of Zor mean? The city of Zor means a small or going forth. So therefore, when Lot said, let me go over to the city called Zor, he said, let me go to this city, this will carry me all. These names are very important in the Bible. So he was already taking a step forward. It may have been small, but it was a small step to take him what? Forward. Amen. Now, look at his wife. His wife stood back from behind him. Now see, in Bible days, even in some Islam's religion, the wife has to walk behind her husband. Right? <coughs> right? <coughs> now the angels in the previous part I told him, don't look for what? Don't look back. Don't look back unless you be what? Consumed. So that means his wife must have been walking in front of her head. Oh Lord. Amen. She was walking in front of her husband. See, her wife didn't want to leave Saturday morning. All her friends were there. All her family, her loved ones were there. She didn't want to leave, even though it was a wretched place. It was full of homosexuality. And since we always harp on the homosexual part, but there was a whole lot of stuff going on inside Saturday morning. Those people were tattooed, they were pierced. Hello, this ain't no new thing. Hello. They were doing all that. They were getting hot. See, that's what sorcery is in the Bible. They were just popular. But for her to look back behind him, that means she looked past her head. Hmm. And what was she looking at when she turned around and looked back? She was looking at what she was familiar with. She missed her familiarity. But if she had been looking at her head, the man who's leading her, it don't matter that she turned around, but if she had looked at her man, maybe she wouldn't have turned into a course. Yeah. But because she looked past her man, hello, somebody got that. Hello, somebody got that. So you don't look past your head. See, she was already in disobedience when she looked past God. Now she might have been a great woman, a good woman. You ain't never heard no people about Lot's wife until that day. And see, that's where I get the term with crackheads that they were stuck on stupid, sitting on silly, waiting on nothing, and turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> What's that coming? <laughs> Stop. Maybe <laughs> hey, that's warranted hey, now. <laughs> Let's go to Luke 17. You know, we don't even see Jesus. This was so powerful that even Jesus met. Y'all see a lot of people stuck <laughs> on salt. <laughs> success in my 20s, and I had more failures in my 40s. 
And now I'm in my 50s and I'm getting success. But I'm having more success in God than I ever did before. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the fact that I have the joy of the Lord in my life. It beats any amount of money or any kind of high or any kind of boy. Until you got high on the Holy Ghost, you ain't been high. Amen. I can't go too deep with that. But until you got high off of God, you ain't been high. Amen. So before you can reach the things of God, before you can reach certain things God has to put, put in front of you. Amen. I don't want to say that. There are things you have to leave before you can reach the things God has in front of you. Amen. Number one, whenever God is pushing you forward, always remind yourself it is his mercy and his grace. Because you ain't going forward without God's mercy. Amen. The only reason why you are sitting here is because God pushed you forward. Amen. Hello. Amen. You thought you was just hungry. But God pushed you to friendship today. Yeah. Everybody in this room, it was preordained before, the, before we even understood time that you would be here. You might have said, oh, I wind up in Montgomery from, from out of town, and I heard about this place, friendship, let me go in and get a meal. No, God pushed you here. No matter, some stranger, hey, man, we're going to go get a meal. Oh, man, this place down on the field. What are you going to get That was God using that individual to push you here to hear the gospel. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God is pushing you without your permission. Amen. How many of y'all know that? Amen. 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 Let's go back to Genesis 19. Okay. And we're going to look at that. Sometimes God, oh boy, do I know that. Because I argued with him about coming to Montgomery for about, what, six months? All I heard was go to Montgomery, Alabama. I'm like, Lord, I'm going to I got four minutes. I ain't leaving. I love these nutty people back here in Philadelphia. I got the old folks, I got the young folk, I got the mentally ill, I got the privileged. Why should I leave, Lord? I'm blessed. Don't leave. Amen. I ain't going. Yes, you <laughs> I guess I listen to him, huh? Genesis 19. Been here two years now. No more. And don't see no sign of me leaving. I guess I'm going to wind up staying here and getting buried here. <laughs> this is me home now. I'm an official mama, a mama girl here. <laughs> Genesis 19, let's look at 14 and 16. So God don't need your permission to push you. Uh, 14 and 16. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened out, saying, Arise, take that wife, and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be still in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, see that? God don't need your permission to push you. He was hanging around. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon him. Come on, boy. Drag him out of it. Without his permission. <laughs> They grabbed him, behold, his head, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him. Where they bring him? For him. And set him without the city. So, not only did they grab him, they grabbed everyone in his family. Do you know it was numbered? What, what, it's always a number in there that just blows my mind. And it's always a number that deals with God. Even in Noah's day, it was eight people that went out. Eight is a number that represents what? New beginning? Amen. Amen. God, with God's resurrection is what? Three. God's man number is what? Six. Six. Mm. Amen. His sons-in-law thought Lot was joking. The angels had to push him to move, and Lot still waited around until the angels had to drag him out, of, out by hand. The reason is because Lot did not want to leave his comfort zone. Hello. How do you get so comfortable where you are? Some of you are really too comfortable right in your friendship. <laughs> you think you want to retire here. Somebody will push you around in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> but you're too comfortable. Anytime you get too 
Burn it. 